Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Busted. Warren police say these guys were on a tear breaking into a, as many as 20 homes, and they say a 15-year-old girl is responsible for helping take them down. And breaking right now, an unprecedented search ends in jubilation, and police have just named a suspect in the abduction of a 5-year-old boy who went missing for 14 hours on Detroit's west side. Happy Friday, everybody. I'm Jason Colthor. Good evening. I'm Karen Drew. Now, we've got those stories in just a couple of minutes, but we want to begin with the Detroit Grand Prix revving up as we head into our weekend. It sure is, Karen, and it is a picture-perfect day for racing in Detroit. The 2019 Chevrolet Detroit Grand Prix weekend is underway, and look at Detroit and look at Belle Isle from above from Sky 4. Absolutely gorgeous. Isn't it? Yes, yes. And while it's pretty from above, you've just got to see these cars roaring from up close to really get a sense of the raw power that's on display and the smell, the smell, Devin, of burning rubber. I just can't You're get enough. You're loving it. I love it. It's, it it's smells great. like victory. I know. <laughs> welcome to the Detroit Grand Prix. I'm Devin Skillion. And I'm Kimberly Gill. And welcome to day one of our exclusive coverage of what's really become a signature event here in the city. And as you said, it's a great day. I mean, for the last day of May, just a classic Detroit yeah. spring day. It's absolutely gorgeous. I wish we could say that we were sure that the weekend that it's going to last yeah. throughout the weekend. Weather's always terrific with this event, but it really just couldn't be off to a better start. But today's the free event, so a lot yep. of uh, families are out here enjoying the, you know, every, everything that it has to offer, hearing the cars go around and seeing them practice, and uh, there's entertainment, there's a lot of food, so it's a fun time. Trying to find the right spot so that you're not just going, you know. <laughs> A and little bit longer coming your way, maybe. And to say we've got every angle of the Grand Prix covered, I think uh, might be an overstatement. Let's take you around and show you what's coming up and who we've got with us. There they are. Steve Garagiola has been out talking to those fans, showing up for a free pre-day. Bernie is uh, with someone right now that you're going to get to know very well over the weekend. That's right. And Jamie Edmonds in the paddock as the team get down. The teams get down to business, but we kick things off with Ben Bailey. Uh, ben, you sure ordered up a great day today. How you doing? Uh, Kim and Devin, good to see you. And I'm afraid we may have used up the best weather of the weekend for the first day of this weekend. And it feels fantastic out here, but it is going to look a whole lot different in the next couple days. Let's show you the Saturday-Sunday forecast. It is tomorrow we're concerned about the most. Saturday, even though the high is going to be right back to 80 degrees, it's that line of thunderstorms that's coming through. Unfortunately, it looks like it may be right at race time. We'll look at the timing of that. And then on Sunday... We're going to be fine as far as precipitation goes. Dry the whole day, partly cloudy, but temperatures about a dozen degrees cooler, only getting to the high of 68. Plus, we're going to see breezy conditions. So Friday definitely is the pick of the three days. So coming up, we'll look at the timing on those storms Saturday and whether or not they can squeeze that race in uh, between that line of storms and also the potential that some of those may turn severe. So all that coming up in a minute. Let's go to the other side of the island where Steve Gargiola is standing by. He's been with the fans all day on what's just been a fantastic Friday. Steve. Uh, ben, it has been a fantastic Friday. We have moved from the fan zone into the paddock area, which is where these teams are hard at work. As you can see, uh, they're not in the fun zone. They have business here. And right now they are uh, fine-tuning these automobiles. We're in the Team Penske paddock area right now. But for the fans, boy, it has been a fantastic day. The best thing about the free day is so many people who don't get an opportunity normally to be around racing. There were a lot of student groups out here, and we spent part of the day with a group from Cass Tech learning about math, science, high tech, and auto racing. Free day at the Grand Prix welcomes a lot of fans who might be enjoying their first experience around race cars. Like this group of STEM students from Cass Tech. Hello everyone, it's uh, very nice to have you here. Visiting with IMSA driver Pippo Durrani, who explained how important science and math are in racing. The driver is just a small part of it. Uh, and it's very important to have a fantastic team behind because you can have the best driver in the world but if your team is not good, if your car is not prepared, you won't be able to win races. They have the time, they have everything. You can even hear other drivers when they're trying to like trash talk you. It's just like, wow. Yeah. So you want to be a race car driver now? Uh, engineer. And the engineers build all this cool stuff, like this $8,000 steering wheel that controls 
pretty much everything. This one is uh, for when the track is wet, so you just change the configuration of the car. Yeah, but where's the CD player? Maybe these future engineers can fix that. A day like this sparks a lot of new interest. I just like how cars work. Like, it's very intricate for it to be so many little components to make up one big component. It's like, wow. Oh, there were some future engineers in that group, and what an education. Technology has absolutely taken over this sport, and he was not kidding about the driver being just a small part. We're kind of on the big boy side now. These are the Indy cars on this side, and Team Penske getting ready for the big day tomorrow, which is uh, the first race day of this doubleheader. Uh, coming up at 6 o'clock for me, I decided I'm kind of a novice. I better get advice from an expert, and boy, I found a good one. That's for you at six. Right now, I'm going to toss it over to Bernie, who's got his own special guest. Bernie? Stevie, thank you much. I, uh, when you say expert, I've got an expert. Becky Dalton is a Canadian actress uh, who has done shows here in the United States and in Canada and is engaged to... James Hinchcliffe. Who is racing here at the Detroit Grand Prix. Yes. And I would think the day before a big race is like kind of a edgy sort of thing. Would that be fair to say? It is. I mean, we just came off of uh, the Indy 500 in May, so it's a very long month for the guys. And then they come here, and it's a double header. Saturday and Sunday, they're racing, they're qualifying. So it's a lot. But I'm very lucky. James is pretty easygoing. So when he's off the track, when he's out of engineering, we just kind of do our regular routine, and everything's everything's easy. You're great. Yeah. And she's done shows here in the United States that people would know. Yeah. For example, she was on Suits with Meghan Markle. I We're going to talk all about that <laughs> and also about... Rap. Uh, the prince uh, in just a couple of moments. Come on back with us. Becky Jamie. Dalton's here. Uh, we're, we're going to Jamie, who's in the paddock now. Jamie. Hey there, Bertie. I'm interested in that Meghan Markle thing. Let me know. But I am in the paddock. This is the busiest place in this whole island. This is uh, Mateus Least and Tony Kanan's garage. You'll see those two cars in there. And what I learned today is these crews fix these cars, tweak these cars, change little uh, portions of these cars all day long, all weekend long, depending on if it's sunny, if it's raining, if it's humid. I learned a lot today in these paddocks. So I'm gonna do a story coming up at 5.30, talking all about what goes on here. Devin, Kimberly, back to you. Okay, we'll be looking forward to it, Jamie. As you know, after my of drive course. back from Mackinac today, I don't want to think about garages at the moment. <laughs> I know, we <laughs> had a little, little bit of, of, a little little bit of tr trouble. Yeah. But we got here, and that's the most important thing, and I wouldn't want to miss it because this is just a, a gorgeous and spectacular scene here from Belle Isle, and our Grand Prix coverage is just getting started. We've got a lot more here coming up over this next 90 minutes of news. And then at 7, be sure to tune in for our Grand Prix Mirror Special. Don't worry, Wheel of Fortune fans and Jeopardy fans, you can watch Pat and Vanna at 8 and then watch Jeopardy James on his historic run coming up at 8.30. He's tough. All right, guys, we'll talk to you again soon. Uh, in other news, developing right now, police have just identified a suspect in the disappearance of a five-year-old boy who went missing for 14 hours on Detroit's west side. This is video of police with that boy after they found him right about 12.30 this afternoon following a frantic morning of searches and an unprecedented police presence. Larry Sproul is live at the boy's home where he disappeared. And Larry, what can you tell us about the situation and the suspect? Good evening, Karen and Jason. We now have that picture of who police say kidnapped little Marcus. Take a very good look at your screen right now. They say that he is 39 years old and he was riding around here with the red moped when somehow little Marcus became interested and he kidnapped Mar little Marcus from his home. Now police are asking and demanding that he turn himself in. Five-year-old Marcus Pruitt is safe Friday after he disappeared from his home here on St. Mary's for 14 hours. Police say his mother reported him missing around 1030 Thursday night. Friday afternoon around 1230, good news. Local for the first TV station on scene as police found the boy about a mile away from his house. You can see little Marcus in the back of this blue car smiling and waving. Units from um, number eight got a police run over to this location. And um, they said they located the kid. Scout car made it over here. He was sitting on the front porch as the officers arrived here. Apparently, the people at the home, I guess they saw you guys' footage, news footage on television, and then they put the information out. They called 911. But there are questions on how he got there. No one had permission to take this child. 
uh, and that the suspect uh, that we are uh, indicating that we are looking for uh, did not have permission to take this child and, and is not known is not known to the family. And again, police are asking that that suspect to turn himself in. They also believe he was riding a red moped, but Marcus is home because of all hands on deck search. Now we're talking about officers, neighbors, and even cadets participating in this search this afternoon. I'm working on that part of the story all new tonight at six. We're live on the choice West side tonight. Larry Sproul, local four. All right, Larry, we'll see you at six still to come at five. The power of a presidential tweet new tonight with the president's latest threat of tariffs led to today and why it could have a massive impact for us here in Metro Detroit. Sean. A woman wakes up to find this her car smashed and pushed up over the curb. I want the police to patrol around here so that it'll stop or or I'm ready to call the mayor. And, and tell him to do something about it because this is ridiculous. She is not happy tonight. She has a message for those racers, for Detroit police and the mayor. As thieves ransacked a home, a teenager was hiding on the phone with 911. Someone just opened my window. Police say her 911 call ended a string of home invasions. We'll tell you where these men were caught. 